Oh, you want this for that? Oh, okay. Thank you. Banana. Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel and today we record, we're, we are, we are, we're, we're, <laughs> we're recording outside because it is a very, very good day, I actually went to the, to the beach, the last time I went to the beach was like two years ago and this is a country with lots of beaches, <laughs> not beaches, <laughs> anyway, now as for today's video we have the review of the 24.7.1 drivers and as I say in all my videos, 24 is the year 2024, 7 is the month July and one is the revision in that same month, so the first revision of July. And I can tell you right away that these drivers are actually, at least in my experience of course, very, very good. <laughs> we had some stuttering in the previous drivers in Fortnite, in EA, FC Sports EA, whatever it's called, and we had some very, very hard stutters there in several cards, almost any AMD card, and it was gladly fixed. I can tell you right away that those stutters are fixed. And according to these release notes, it seems that AMD was kind of charging something. Like today's sponsor. Ugreen, featuring the Nexo X 160W charger. A compact, powerful and extremely well-made charger, delivering you that premium feeling that we all love. <laughs> yeah, boy. Featuring one USB-A and three USB-C ports that can be used to charge your laptop, smartphone, tablet and even your Steam Deck. All at the same time. You can also use it with your MacBook Pro as the USB-C one features the PD 3.1 protocol and it even supports Samsung's super fast charging 2.0. And it doesn't overheat as it brings Thermal Guard 2.0 that also protects your devices from short circuits, over voltage and all the other shenanigans, which is awesome. Get your Nexodex charger and charge everything everywhere. So let's start with the release notes. And by the way, today's sponsor actually has up to 41% discount uh, this weekend due to the Prime Days, I believe. So if you're looking for something to charge several equipments at the same time, maybe the Nexo X 160 watts is the one he wants. So now finally, release notes. Firstly, we start with highlights with new game support for Zenless Zone Zero, which is <laughs> an interesting name, kind of triple Z. Kunitsu Gami, Path of the Goddess with up to 16% increase in performance for Kunitsu, for Kunitsu Gami Path of the Goddess, 4K resolution using the 24.7.1 with a 7900XTX, up to 12% increase at 4K as well when using the RX 7800XT and up to 12% increase when running 4K as well with the 24.7.1 drivers of course with the RX 7600 XT. Although 4K for a 7600 XT is not really the thing, yeah. We also have expanded Hypertune support with Greyzone Warfare, Lords of the Fallen, Robocop Rock City and Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. Uh, if you don't really know what's Hypertune games, uh, they are games where HyperRx is fine-tuned to work on that game, means that it will work with Radeon Anti-Lag, Radeon Boost, AFMF, Fluid Motion Frames and several other technologies at the same time and if you already have a game where, where FSR is enabled, it will enable automatically FSR inside the game instead of using Radeon Super Resolution which uses the, um, the algorithm from Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1.0 basically FSR 1.0 which uses spatial upscaling and is not that great so basically hyper-tuned games are games that are fine-tuned for HyperRx especially to work with the FSR instead of RSR. Now this is an interesting one AMD Radeon Anti-Lag 2 support for Dota 2 takes responsive gaming to the next level by introducing an in-game option to optimally pace frames, further reducing input lag on AMD RDNA architecture-based discrete and integrated graphics products. AMD Radeon Anti-Lag 2 features an on-screen overlay that can be used to display the system latency of supported games. When Anti-Lag 2 is enabled, the on-screen overlay can be toggled on by using Alt plus Shift plus L hotkey. Use the Alt plus Shift plus L hotkey to enable Radeon Anti-Lag 2 latency monitor. And once activated, a small white chevron, chevron, nice word, will appear in the top left corner of your display, indicating that it is enabled. Use the Alt Shift plus L again to cycle through the following latency monitor display options. No metrics, FPS only, FPS FPS in latency in milliseconds, FPS in latency in milliseconds and frames, FPS in latency in milliseconds and frames with a legend. 
To compare the difference between anti-lag 2 on and anti-lag off, just hold the right control key. Anti-lag 2 currently supports Dota 2 while using the DirectX 11 API. So basically, if you're running Vulkan with Dota 2, well, uh, anti-lag 2 just won't work. And I tested it on this video that I released like one hour ago or something like that. And you can actually test it yourself, let me know what you think. Uh, and it does not work in Vulkan, the option does, doesn't even appear inside the game. But it does, <coughs> sorry, it does work with DirectX 11. Now let's go to the interesting part. Fixed issues and improvements. Improvements to stutter when AMD Radeon Anti-Lag and AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3 frame generation is enabled. And this is actually a very interesting thing because some people around the internet have been complaining about how Radeon Anti-Lag causes stuttering when using frame generation, FSR 3 frame generation or FSR 3.1 frame generation. And it seems that with these drivers, Radeon Anti-Lag was actually fine-tuned to work with FSR 3 frame generation. I myself tested it in some games and testing together the frame generation with anti-lag does not cause stutters anymore. Once again, at least for me, maybe you might have a different experience, but in my tests, yeah, it didn't cause any kind of stutter, which is actually great. Thanks, AMD. Improvements to stutter while playing Fortnite with DirectX 12 API. And the X12 is the base API for this game. As soon as you install Fortnite, it will uh, automatically enable the X12 because, I mean, the X11 is old and the performance mode, I sincerely don't know who is using the performance mode unless they're like, they're like using a potato PC. Otherwise, I don't see much sense. You can just use the X12 and run low settings with upscaling and so on, but whatever. Um, and yeah, I can tell you right away once again that Fortnite is now playing much better, maybe, maybe even better than the 24.5.1 drivers that in my opinion are the best ones yet. And with the 24.7.1, we have all that we have, all the good things that we had with the 24.6.1, Plus, no stutters whatsoever. Texture corruption may be observed while playing Tekken 8 with ray tracing or upscale enabled. And this is another bug that people complained a lot about, people that play Tekken 8, and it seems that is finally fixed. Great. Corruption may be observed while playing Dying Light to Stay Human Reloaded Edition with Radeon Boost enabled, another fixed issue. Intermittent system crash or corruption might be observed or may be observed while playing Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy with ray tracing enabled. Virtual super resolution or display color enhancements may be set to disabled after driver upgrade. Unable to change display pixel format with certain Windows display languages. Intermittent black corruption may be observed on scaled 3D models while using Origin or Origin Pro application. And the last fixed issue is black corruption may be observed while fast forwarding using pot player. But since not everything is good things, let's go to the bad points. The first known issue is lower than expected performance or excess stutter may be observed while playing Battlefield 2042 on Radeon RX 6000 and 7000 series GPUs, resolution targeted for the 24.8.1 drivers. And by the way, I actually, I actually played Battlefield 2042 and you can see the gameplay passing right now on the screen um, and it's using the 24.7.1 drivers and it was perfectly playable, I played in multiplayer as well and it was perfectly fine, so uh, at least for me the gameplay had no stutters, especially not any kind of excessive stutters, uh, but once again let me know your opinion in the comment section if you're having those stutters or not, for me it was fine. And the last known issue is audio and video may intermittently become out of sync while recording using the AV1 codec in the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition, resolution targeted for the 24.9.1. And it is interesting because they were always targeting the quarter two or quarter three, I believe, yes, quarter three, um, and we now have kind of a resolution targeted for not quarter three, but now the 24.9.1 driver. So uh, let's say two months tops, two months tops. We have all the bells and whistles that we had on the previous drivers, but with more performance in newer games and not only newer games, also in some older games as well. We'll see that in the, in the end of the video uh, and especially in Fortnite and EA Sports FC 24 that the stutters are now gone. And now to the part that most of you come to see, which is the goods and bads and the things that I found about these drivers. Well, firstly, like I said before, the Fortnite and the EAFC 24 stutters are actually fixed and now they're very, very rare. The stutters that we usually have when loading a new part, like half a second, 
bam done not stutters like we had before with two seconds length it was just insane and made the games unplayable i tested both fortnite and now as passing right now on the screen eafc 24 and it is actually working much much better now we do have a stutter here and there when loading the things for the first time but i mean it's perfectly perfectly usable and we have no stutters when playing the game per se uh, or going to the menu and so on it is definitely fixed which is a very good thing finally as stated before we also have raiden anti-lag now working properly with frame generation i tested it myself like i told you before in the um, in the beginning of the video and it works perfectly with frame generation and anti-lag both at the same time i see basically no difference in terms of latency but for you guys that notice that quite more well, you can now use it without having those intermittent stutters here and there when using both together because anti-lag was now fine-tuned to be used with frame generation, which is actually great, yeah. From my test, it also seems that we do have the, um, a better overall smoothness with several cards in Counter-Strike 2. And take this with a grain of salt because in terms of FPS, they, they are more or less the same. But I do feel that we have overall smoothness and a bit more FPS in all the GPUs that I tested in Counter-Strike 2 with these 24.7.1 drivers. But once again, leave your comment in the comment section if you play Counter-Strike 2. Let me know if these drivers are good or bad for you. We can now also have lower latency in Dota 2 using Anti-Lag 2. And even though it didn't do really much for, the, um, for Dota 2 itself, depending on the build you have, the resolution you play at, the settings, it kind of depends, but it can indeed decrease, the, um, decrease the, the latency that you have, the overall latency. It isn't a big difference, maybe up to, let's say, 15%, uh, but since that game also runs, or usually runs at high FPS numbers, the difference will be not much. Even in lower end builds like the 7940HS and the Radeon 780M, the difference was like, 10% in latency overall, so not a big difference, but well, at least it is there. One thing that I noticed, but I didn't notice on the previous drivers, but it actually started with the 24.6.1 drivers, is that the display tab is now back to the preferences or the settings tab. Instead of being on the gaming tab, they, they now have the, um, the display menu on the preferences. So now on the gaming tab, we only have the graphic settings, but not the graphics and display part. So yeah, that's just a thing that I found. I actually thought it started with these drivers, but no, it started with the 24.6.1 drivers. I just didn't notice it. In terms of the, the 7900 XTX, I noticed more FPS in Counter-Strike 2 and more FPS in Fortnite, of course. As for the 7650 XT, I also noticed a smoother overall gameplay with these drivers. So these drivers for me, at least for the experience that I have on three computers, at least for several days, because I had early access. Thank you, MD, by the way. I can tell you that these drivers are very, very stable overall. No stutters, no crashes. Um, the software works much better now than it did before. It works, it just works. It just works. Much better, the stutters are gone, at least in those games that I played. Frame generation now works well with Radiant Anti-Lag, and there are more and more things to come, but just stay tuned. Not yet, but close, not yet. I also wanted to ask you about VR performance, because there were some people that told me that in the 24.6.1... <laughs> in the 24.6.1 drivers, the VR performance was massively improved in uh, in their in their case in their case scenario, not in every scenario I assume, but in their case usage in their case scenario, the VR performance was massively increased. So if you are using VR headsets, let me know if the previous drivers or these drivers improved your VR your VR. <laughs> Portuguese is taking over your VR performance or not. I really want to know. So once again, leave it in the comment section. And well, guys, I guess that's it for today's video. Yeah, uh, lots of fixed issues. We actually have a very, very small known issues list. And even those issues, they are already targeting them for one month uh, and two months after the, the release that we have now. And yeah, the stutters are gone. Finally, we have a much more stable gameplay. It seems that overall it is everything working, frame generation with anti-lag, I mean, it's a win-win situation. If you're asking me, these drivers are very, very good, and I can definitely advise you to, to upgrade to them. If you're using older drivers, try these ones, because I believe that these ones will be very, very good for your usage. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section, hit like, subscribe, all those things, share the video, and see you in the next one, guys. Cheers. And my brother is actually... Yeah, actually uh, washing the car, it seems. Thank you once again.
The payphone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? Hello, Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Had I had this conversation before? Helen, listen to me carefully. 